Hello everyone, welcome to FT Plus Academy for Civil Services. It's a video on daily news and editorial analysis, which I'll be covering from the Hindu and Indian Express. The most important news and editorial that is relevant for both prelims and mains examination perspective will be discussed in this session. Let's get started with the news topic list. Today is 29th of October. The first important news that is Prime Minister proposes idea of one nation, one uniform for the police services. Second, panel raises data privacy concern in the draft telecom law. We'll see the detail and the concern that has been raised by the parliamentary panel. Third, India called for sustained efforts needed to fight the terror. Fourth, genetic engineering appraisal committee to recommend for the herbicide torrent cottons. And the last is an editorial at COP27 move that needle on climate action. Apart from the news and editorial discussion, at the end of this video, there will be MCQ based questions and these questions will be based on current affairs that will help you for the upcoming prelims examination. So without any further delay, let's get started. Before I begin this session, those of you who are new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services on YouTube. If you like this video, if you find this video informative and helpful, do press a like button. Starting the session with the first news of the day, that is Prime Minister proposes the idea for one nation, one uniform for the polices and the law enforcement agencies. Something important for general studies paper 3 under the subtopic, that is various security forces, agencies, their mandate and structure. So the Prime Minister recently mooted the idea for one nation, one uniform for the polices. If something which is coming directly from the Prime Minister vision, you can expect a question on the mains examination and their relation on the mains examination part, right? So while addressing our Chintan Sivar, which is ongoing in the state of Haryana, of the state Home Minister through a video conference, Prime Minister also warned of the forces that they're increasing their intellectual sphere to push youth towards extremism and prevent the mind of the coming generation. So the Prime Minister wanted to ensure that the future ki generation hai, wo police ke functioning pe bhi bohat zyada nirbhar karti and even it is acting as a role model, right? Even the intellectual sphere of the citizen is impacted how the policing performs. The Prime Minister say he is not imposing the views on the states to add a common uniform at this instance is only because it will take time. Agar aap is ke reform karte hai, it will definitely call for a time which can be implemented uh, in the due process of time. Now, according to the seventh schedule of Indian constitution, law and order jo hai, wo state ki subject hai, or state government ka stake waha pe zyada hota hai. But if you talk about the central government via the Ministry of Home Affairs, right, it gave a recommendation and advice to the state government. Now, talking about the uniform, as we know, there's a differences in the color code of the uniform. And just to remind you, the only state in India, that is West Bengal, still continue with the white uniform, right? And many other state has a differences in the color of the uniform, also known as khaki, right? So what Prime Minister wanted, ki uniform color code, ho, uniform pattern, ho, even for the ranking, it should be uniform across the country. Only the name of the state police will be mentioned for each and every batches. And accordingly, everything going to be the uniform in nature. Now, what is the rationale behind this idea which Prime Minister has mooted? So about one nation, one uniform suggestions from the Prime Minister, I think that the identity of the police for across the country should be identical, right? And the Prime Minister has categorically stated that it may happen and it may happen in 5, 10 or 100 years. This basically he was trying to convey an idea that it is not a necessary immediately the state can work upon it and implement accordingly because they will be requiring a lot of coordination between the state government as well. One nation, one uniform will not only ensure the manufacturers of the quality product because they will be used on the large scale, but also to give a common identity to the law enforcement personnel and also the people who recognize them everywhere in the country. So uniformity, so identifications, the police, no, given even the, the differences which is created for each and every state, there will be a uniformity which will be there, right? So these were the basic rationale behind the Prime Minister vision of one nation, one uniform. 
Now, the Prime Minister also called for using the smart technology, which is again a game changer. The state of art technology in the policing is definitely going to ramp up the entire investigation process also. The law and order situation can be improved with the help of the smart technology and maintaining the law and order 24 into 7 is a job of the police, right? And even it called for a lot of alertness, considering the fact that the level of crime is increasing, it is inclined and tilted towards technological crime, the police personnel need to use a smart technology. The use of drone technology, which is more or less evident in our country, for smuggling weapons or drugs, a government need to keep a wide on working towards new technology and tackle the menace which is ongoing. The law and order system can be improved with the help of smart technology. Either it can be software upgradations, hardware part like drone, many other state of art technology that can help the law enforcement agencies to track the cases. The police technological mission of the central government has stressed the need for the common platform as differencing technology or the different stake do not talk to each other. Now the second news that is panel raises data privacy concern in the draft telecom law, something important for Jenna Studies paper 2 under the subtopic government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from its design and implementations. So recently the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Information and Technology, they have raised several questions and implications on the data with regards to the individual citizen. It called that the definition for the public interest is still vague in the draft law. And in terms of the national security, the draft Indian Telecommunication Act has not discussed is with a well worth. The Parliamentary Standing Committee on Information and Technology meet for the first time after they have reconstituted with the deliberations upon the draft telecom bill. And the stakeholders were open for the comment, even for public comment it was open. The final opinion was taken and a report was submitted by the Parliamentary Standing Committee on this particular regard, that is with regards to the Draft Indian Telecommunication Act 2022. Now some of the important concerns that were raised by the panel members, so the panel member of the parliamentary committee has flagged the concern over the definitions of the OTT, that is over the top communications app, that was not very clear. The some member wanted to know about the possible health hazard when a large number of telecom tower of the 5G and other services are coming up. India, many other leading telecom operator in India is launching 5G services. Airtel has officially announced Jio will be launching all its services by the end of this year. So possibly Idea and Vodafone will also launch it. They have officially announced, but the coverage is still lacking due to some other technical regions. So this is the possible health hazard that can be there from the 5G networks and towers. They emphasize that there's a need for adequate safeguard to tackle the possible health and the environmental hazards. The draft law has a serious loopholes that can be misused of infringement on the privacy issues. And with regards to the public interest emergency and the national security as a reason, overreaching power is being vested with the administration without adequate oversight or the mechanism. Right? So these things need to be taken care of. Now about basics of the draft Indian Telecommunication Act, because this track is examination point of view kafi zyada relevant. You can expect a direct question of the prelims examination and even some relations to the main examination can also be utilized. So government apne draft hai, Indian Telecommunication Bill September 22 mein launch ki thi. And this draft aims to consolidate and amend the existing law, even call for provisional development and expansion of the operation telecommunication telecom network infrastructure. Or this bill, jo draft bill hai, usme three important telecommunications. There are considered three separate acts that govern the telecommunications act. First is like the Telegraph Act of 1885. Then there is Indian Wireless Act, Indian Wireless Telegraphy Act 1993. And Telegraph Wireless, that is Unlawful Protections, called 1950. So the, these were the earlier law that was merged. Now, the bill propagates the significant changes, including the bringing of over the top platform under the ambit of the telecom services that will require alliances to operate provisional message interruptions in terms of public emergency. 
Now moving to the other news, India called for sustained effort needed to fight terrorism. Something important for gender studies paper 2 under the subtopic bilateral regional grouping and agreement involving India and affecting India's interest. India's external affairs minister has highlighted the global threat of terrorism that is corn growing and it is expanding particularly in Asian and African countries. This statement was made uh, like uh, the recent meeting which is ongoing at the UNSC CTC or ye baati India ke jo external affairs minister Mr. Ajay Shankar ne is baat pe concern highlight karte hoi kahi hai ki UNSC ke bohat saare efforts ke bawajood bhi abhi tak there is a grave threat to humanity in Af which has which has only come from the terrorism right so despite the fact that the best possible effort which was made by the UNSC the practicality the ground realities is still that we have not achieved the success. India is hosting a two-day anti-terrorism meeting of the United Nations Security Council. So the place and venue become important for many other competitive examination. And the ongoing meeting in the New Delhi is being held under India's chair of the CTC, that is Counter-Terrorism Committee. Threat of terrorism is again a big issue. India has been vocal about the part and evident of the fact that India has been witnessing the crime from the immediate neighbors like Pakistan. So the external affairs minister has noted that despite the United Nations Security Council best effort, the threat of terrorism is only growing and expanding, particularly in the Asian and African countries, as successive report of 1267 sanctions monitoring the report that was highlighted. So even you can quote this as an example, if in the main paper it is required. While addressing the United Nations Security Council special meeting, the Counter-Terrorism Committee has said that the terrorism remain the grave threat to the humanity. The United Nations Security Council in the past two decades has evolved as an important architecture, primarily around the counter-terrorism sanctions and even the regime to combat the menace. Flip side of emerging technology ki baat ki ke, kis se emerging technology threat ho sakti, possible threat for the countries. Highlighting the flip side of the emerging technology, India ke jo external affairs minister unhone ka that a virtual private network, encrypted message services, blockchain also throw the new challenge to the government and regulatory agency even for the law enforcement agency for indigenous India and globally. Technology has thrown up new challenges for the government, right? Or its vulnerability jo hai, wo kafi zada bhi badi hai technological ke upgradations or advancement ki wajis. He noted that the internet and the social media platform have turned the potent instrument in the toolkit of the terrorism and militant group for spreading the propaganda, radicalizations, conspiracy theories that aims to destabilize the societies. Now some voluntary contribution which was made by India, India has made a pledge and commitment in terms of giving a financial support as well. So India's external affairs minister has announced that India will make a voluntary contributions of half a million dollars to the United Nations Trust Fund for the counter-terrorism for this year to augment the UNOCT providing the capacity building support and even to prevent any kind of uh, counter-terrorism threat that is ongoing globally. Another news that is GAC to recommend for the herbicide torrent mm -hmm. cotton or called HT totten. Something important for gender studies paper 3 that is Achievement of Indian science and technology, Indianization of technology and development of new technology. So we'll see how the herbicide tolerant cotton has been allowed, will be allowed by the GEC approval. After the Delhi University Transit Hybrid Master, which was approved by the GEC, I've discussed this news yesterday, if not watched it, do check it out. You'll find that in the video section. So, this approval ke baad, jo mustard ke approval di gayi hai, uske baad ab cotton ke approval ki baat ki jari hai, and this is something which, after all the nuances and variations which was checked by the committee, finally the environmental release of the genetified or GM modified cottons jo hai, jo jise a German multinational companies Bayer AG ne built kiya, and will be allowed by the farmer to spray the herbicide glyphosate. Transgenic cottons, ki agar baat kare, this is like Bulgar 2 Roundup Ready Flex. This is BG2 RRF. Contains three alien allergen. The first is Cry 1AC, and second is Cry 2AB, being isolated by the soil bacterium. And these technical things are not required, but 
if you're reading a newspaper, you should have some basic idea, right? So bacillus fingogenesis or the BT coding for the protein toxicity that is American bullworm, spotted bullworm and tobacco caterpillars insect as a pest. The third generation is CPESPS, sourced from another soil bacterium that is agrobacterium to bear physicists. The BCGRF2 uh, cotton has been already undergone biosafety research in the fields of trial back 2013. So this is not new. The trial process is ongoing from a couple of decades and the achievement has successfully been made by the scientists after which the approval was granted by the GEs. Now, if you talk about genetic engineering for any plant that take place, the researcher isolates the gene from an organism and trail it to what the plant part that wanted to import. So there's a cell which is desired, right? Uske baad usi cell pe genetic material ko insert ki jati. You can see this image, right? And isolations take place. This is inserted in the plant and the desired result is taken care of, right? This is how things work. Now about the herbicide tolerant Bt cotton. This is a variant which adds another layer of modifications making a plant resilient to herbicide glycophosphate and has also been approved by the regulator in India, GEAC, the Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee is the apex body. Fears uh, include a glycophosphate having a carcinogenic effect, cancerous hoti hai kai as well as unchecked spread of herbicide resistance to nearby plant through pollinations creating a variety of super weeds. Now something basic about the genetic engineering appraisal committee GEAC ke agar baare mein baat kare ye functions karti hai under ministry of environment forest and climate change very important point you UPC tend to confuse you in this terms of ministries as well so make sure you're thorough with it it is responsible for appraisal of the activities involving a large scale hazardous microorganism recombinant research industrial pollutions and environmental and time the committee is also responsible for appraisal proposal related to the release of genetically engineered organism and produce and the products into the environment including the experimental field trials. Now moving to the editorial of the day at COP27 move the needle on the climate action. Something important for gender studies paper 3 that is conservation, environmental pollutions, degradation and EIA. So what I'm going to discuss under this editorial, first we look into the theme of this editorial. The theme of this editorial is about the COP27, which is going to have climate finance and climate action. We'll be looking into an important subhead of this editorial, like the core issues that is there, issues of climate finance, carbon neutrality target, advance of the year net zero, targets that is set by India as well by 2070, and the bank can scale up the climate projects. So India and other developed countries are genuinely worried with the aftermath effect of the COVID-19. Russia work about just as a problem with a supply chain man, even for the crude oils and energy sector is a concern and global economic downturn. These are the three important issues globally, which is creating problem for all the economies. But the trouble is in the pale comparison with the climate catastrophe, right, which is already resulting in the current trajectory of the greenhouse gases emission, which affects the developing economy to the larger extent. And even the contribution which is made by the developed economy in terms of climate financing is very low. So just as they have just as they have reached the environment, ko, utni unki contributions finances pe help to help developing countries. Ke nahi ke. This is why it is imperative that the COP27, that is the United Nations Climate Change Summit, which is there going to help in Egypt, make a real advanced state which call for a worst effect of the climate and the global warming. Now, this is a point that we need to concern. Even some of the target which was set by the Paris climate change, usse bhi achieve karne ke hai. some of them has already been not met yet. Now, the core issues, a breakthrough must be made in rectifying the decades of the loop side, that is emissions made by the rich countries or the developed countries, specifically countries like United States and China. Extending the massive finances that developing countries or economy needed carbon neutrality target full achieve by this is something to help keep the temperature below 2 degrees Celsius, which is envisaged in the Paris climate change. COP27 would be successes if progresses are made on the both sides of the issues. One way for the summit is to name the countries that are most out of the line 
and the countries that is emitting on a larger side need to have more financial support for the developing countries as well. Now, issues of the climate finance care baat kare, developed and rich countries have already shows that they can have a vast resources to tackle the emergencies. And even for 2008 and 2009, a global finance crisis ke baat kare, the countries only contributed to 15 trillion commitment right by 2020. And even the major economy is still fighting from the recovery of COVID-19. So these things need to be looked upon. Now, when it comes to climate change, the rich countries failing Dismally, with the UN goal that is by 100 billion annually, the climate finance of the developing countries has to come, and this will be evident in the COP27 meeting as well. So COP27, में जो climate finance की issues है, वो काफी ज़्यादा dominate करेगी, because many developed countries are have not shown their accountability in terms of the finances. Now carbon neutrality targets की अगर बात करें, by 2050 most of the country uh, they have said they will be reaching out to the target. and ahead of cop 27 singapore has announced that it will achieve the net zero emissions by 2050 and even a signal that is coming from a country which has only 0.1% of the carbon footprinting very very important point take a note of this even you can use this in the mains paper now talking about other countries for the target of the net zero emission agar india ki baat kare india ne 2070 ki target di hai the prime minister in the cop 26 meeting has called that India will be chasing the target and achieving the target of net zero emissions by 2070. Now, India is heavily reliant on the fossil fuel for extreme high and high GDP growth. The India's biggest goal just cannot achieve the face of runaway climate change. So, definitely, this is a time which India need to make a progress and achieve to a target of net zero emissions. China ki baat kare. China have set a target of 2070, and if you if you see the global energy production that is over 70% in china and country continue to finance on the fossil fuel based infrastructure now bank can scale up the climate projects how because cop 27 meeting should be an extensive use of the market to shift up the global economy to the low growth path and the summit could back up the radical shift of the countries adopting the climate pricing agar pricing ki baat kare for example why a significant carbon tax and resources pollution will be taken care of and here the point to be noted is that the developed countries need to have a finance to the developing countries so that they can adequately take measures to overcome the problem the climate finance has vastly scaled up by the multilateral development banks which include the world bank the asian development bank which can which can even witness a strong climate action mandate so this is how a resolutions towards the climate finances can be made by the multilateral forums now moving to the mcq questions of the day before i proceed just to tell you the answers of your study questions for first question the correct option is a for second question the correct option is c today's mcq for practice aapko batana hai bureau of energy efficiency ke bare mein it's a statutory body under ministry of power set up in 2002 under the provisions of Energy Conservation Act 2001. It is mandated to implement the policy and program in the area of energy efficiency and conservation. So do check it out for the correct option. Second is Malabar exercise. The trilateral is a annual trilateral exercise between navies of India, Japan, and United States. The exercise is alternatively held in Indian and Pacific Ocean. So do check it out for the correct option. This was all about for the daily news and editorial analysis, followed by the MCQ questions. If you have any other concern, you can let me know. I'll be more than happy to assist you. For time being, I'm signing off. Thank you so much for watching this video.